Welcome to PA History To Go, a series of videos presented by the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission with funding from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. These short videos, filmed at locations along the Pennsylvania Trails of History, serve to introduce virtual visitors to our sites as we explore the varied stories that make up Pennsylvania's rich history. Watch them all to learn about the people, places, industries, and events that make Pennsylvania so special. So I think one of the most interesting things about the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania is that the history that we tell here doesn't really have an end date. Railroads got their start in the 1820s and 30s, but we're still living railroad history every day. Railroads are still around, they're still alive and well. So the story we have for you, all of our visitors, is one that continues to this day. Railroads changed our lives. Certainly they connected small towns with big cities and certainly they connected the markets of the big cities and the small towns with each other. They moved millions of tons of freight every year. They transported people of all ways of life and all backgrounds between various destinations, whether that's a small town in a big city, to school or to work, or whether that's to some amazing destination like a resort or a national park. So the story is still with us today, and we're certainly happy to share that with folks here at the Railroad Museum. So we try to tell the story through our interpretation of our equipment, through our interactives, our exhibits, and our displays that we have throughout the museum. We really try to focus on three main themes when telling this story of Pennsylvania Railroads. And these themes are the stories of people, progress, and technology estimated that at one point, one in four or one in five Pennsylvanians actually work for the railroads. Sometimes it's easy to get so caught up in the technical and the mechanical aspects of railroads that we often forget about the people who really made it possible. Engineers, conductors, firemen, brakemen, cooks, track workers, shop workers. So there was some railroad version of that job in the industry. Railroads in Pennsylvania were a major employer, and we certainly helped to tell those stories here. So another theme that we talk about here at the museum is progress. And whether or not the railroads liked it, they were often at the forefront of progress. A lot of things that we often take for granted today, things like first aid kits, borosilicate glass like Pyrex, the shipping of perishable goods such as meat and vegetables and fruits, in a refrigerated car, and even the standardization of time all has their roots back with the railroads. So the progress that came about from the railroads, the innovations that came about, more often than not due to simple necessity, the innovations that came about are why we have exhibits called Innovation Giants and Progress Matters here at the museum. Because as technology advanced, so too did the railroads they were forced to advance just as technology did. The way that we talk about technology and the change that you see on the railroads is through our Trainworks exhibit on Platform One. Trainworks talks about the changes throughout the decades on the railroads, from the time when railroads were using Lincoln pin couplers to why and how they changed to automatic knuckle couplers that you see on railroads today. From the use of manual brakes to bring the train to a halt, to air brake systems that are much, much safer in bringing trains to a stop. And how something as simple as a combination of water, coal, and fire is able to make a 350 ton locomotive actually operate so all in all, the story that we're trying to tell at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania is people, progress, and technology. Beginning in 1972, ground was broken for the construction of the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania, which was completed in 1974, and we opened to the public for the first time on April 22nd, 
1975. We've been open ever since. It was the first uh, railroad museum structure built specifically as a railroad museum in North America, and it was the first state-owned railroad museum constructed as well. If you look at it in terms of railroad history, uh, we're very close, just a few miles from what was the main line of the Pennsylvania Railroad uh, from New York all the way to Chicago. Before that, it was the main line of the Philadelphia and Columbia Railroad, and then eventually the Pennsylvania Railroad. Today, uh, major railroads like Amtrak and Norfolk Southern uh, serve this region as well. So it's a very important area for railroading. Of course, we were already starting to collect pieces for the future Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania, which as I said, opened in 1975. So by that point, we were already starting to amass an impressive collection uh, of locomotives and rolling stock. But it isn't just the big equipment that we have, and it isn't just the Pennsylvania Railroad that we focus on, but also in smaller objects. Our collections department is divided into two different areas. We collect flat material, so photographs, books, paper, blueprints, drawings, anything we like to say that doesn't create a shadow. The other aspect of the collections department is our 3D artifacts or anything that does create a shadow. Uniforms to china to heavyweight tools to just anything that has to do uh, with railroading and that is what we are collecting. We are collecting anything that has to do with railroading specifically in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. What we are really doing in the collections department is organizing, preserving, and maintaining the history of the railroading industry in Pennsylvania. We have about 500,000 images in the archives, about 7,500 library items, and over a million pieces of paper. And then in terms of 3D collections, we have over 15,000 artifacts in our uh, collections department. That really ranges from anything as small as a pin that you would find on a uniform lapel. We've got delicate china, we've got art, but it also is all the heavy tools and machinery that were used to build and repair locomotives. And then, of course, the rolling stock itself. So all the train cars and the locomotives and cabooses and things like that that you see out in the hall, those are part of our collection, part of what we are cleaning, repairing, maintaining. Um, so it's it's a lot, uh, a lot of variety in what we are caring for and uh, collecting. There's actually a few different projects that we're working on in the archives that are newer and pretty exciting to us. We are preparing to digitize our 16 millimeter film collection. It's going to be uh, pretty exciting. I think it's going to be a really valuable resource. The east end of our building looks very much like a late 19th century, late Victorian era passenger train shed. One that you might find in Philadelphia uh, at the time. Uh, in the 1880s and 90s. Like Philadelphia's Broad Street Station, they have these grand passenger train sheds and the interior of our East End edition looks very similar to that. It has six tracks, it's a very impressive structure, but it allows us to bring a lot of our equipment from outside indoors. And for 25 years, that structure has been a very important feature here at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. We've also done some other additions over time. In 1998, we added a uh, restoration shop. We're in the forever business. The restoration process is a lengthy process. It takes on the average of 20,000 man hours. First thing we do is a forensic analysis. We walk around, take pictures. The second step is the deconstruct step. That's where we physically start taking pieces off, where we discover the rust and damage that needs to be repaired, some cases the pieces have to be replaced, and the third is the rebuilt stage. That's where we put all the new pieces on, put all the old pieces that are usable back on the locomotive or the rail car, whatever we're working on. Give it a coat of paint, letter it, and send it back out to the rolling stock floor. We have to make sure that the work we do lasts indefinitely. Dents and dings in a locomotive will stay there. They're part of the locomotive's history. Our work has to disappear, so it takes a rather long time. In 1999, we added Stewart Junction, which is a railway education center. 
We added the 1915 golden age of railroading street scene in 2005. In 2007, we added our grand new uh, atrium and front entrance. So there's certainly a lot to see here, but probably the main reason uh, why uh, folks get really excited when they come here is to see our trains, some of which date back to the 1880s uh, and 90s um, and the early part of the 20th century. But certainly there are um, very impressive things that people like to see here and, and like to experience while they're here. It's not just limited to our artifacts, but also our new interactive exhibits. Uh, Stewart Junction that I mentioned previously has a lot of hands-on activities. Uh, we have a new hands-on area called Train Works, which also has hands-on exhibits as well. Uh, so there's a little bit of everything for all of our guests here, and we're so excited to have you here at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania.